using the same database that we have in other uh, tutorials that we've created. Uh, in this one we are going to look at forms and options for opening up forms, kind of the formatting behind them, uh, how to create pop-up windows and kind of control the different options that go with those, so a lot of the properties. So in prior tutorials we've created reports in this database, we've created forms um, in all different areas. So to start off with, for this one we will create a dashboard form. And there's different options, different ways to do this, but basically for this we're just going to create a blank form. And you can put anything back here. You can put images, you can insert images, you can insert pictures. You can do a lot of different things with this. But for this tutorial, we're just going to put some command boxes. So say we want to link this to an event. So on click, select Macro Builder. Uh, we're going to want to open, say, a form for this one. And the form that we want to open is Job Form 1. In this form, if you've seen other tutorials, uh, this form helps to filter other forms to open up uh, reports and different things like that. And these settings down here will generate different ways of opening up the form. Uh, we'll leave it at normal for now. And for data mode, we'll put read only. So if we save this and close, change this to job form. Uh, you can change the formatting if you go to the format tab. Uh, you'll notice the back style, um, width, height, back color. You can change the color of this to whatever color you want. Um, you can do a lot of different things with formatting for this. Um, you change text size, but that's small stuff. Uh, the biggest part would be hooking this to data and events. If you select the command box, you'll see the event is a embedded macro. The difference between embedded macros and regular macros is if you go to create and you decide to create a macro, it's going to save it as it would a form or a report. And the purpose of this is if you're going to use multiple macros, and you're actually given the option to run this. If you come here, you'll see that you can run it as an event procedure, which is a created embedded macro, or the macro that you've created outside of that, the non-embedded macro. Uh, macro. So we'll go ahead and open this up in form view and your form if you select this will open up the form that we told it to open up. And this one is already generated. So the other option that we have would be to open this form in dialog view save. And what this is going to do is if we go back to our form view and select job form it's out of the window here but it will open this up all the way to the left corner of your screen and you'll be able to move it and you'll see that down here at the bottom you have a record selector, you have a search, a filter, you have a control box uh, up here and you have the option to close and what we can do is if we move this over and open this up in design view. You'll notice this box in the upper left hand corner is selected. If you unselect it and go to the property sheet, you will notice that on the all box that some of the uh, available properties aren't there. But if you select this box in the corner, you'll notice that the form selection is there. Or if you drop this down and select form, you'll be able to go to all and scroll down, 
and you'll see different options. So if we turn off record selectors, navigation buttons, and let's auto center our box. And we'll leave the control box and the close button activated. So if we save this and go back to this view, select form, you'll notice that the form generates right in the center of our screen. That's the auto center feature. You'll also notice that the selectors and the search button are not available at the bottom. Uh, this could be useful if you're not wanting your users of your database to have the option to move across different records. Um, but we still have this control box up here and we still can close through the X. So the other option to do with that would be to open in design view again. You'll notice that form is selected. And we'll go down to close button. We'll disable the close button and the control box. If you open this up, you'll notice that we have no option to close. If the control box was there, you'd still see an X, but it would be grayed out and you would not be able to close the box. So, we're still able to move this around, but we're not able to close it. So if you right click and close, you'll be able to close it that way. Now, you need to build functionality into the form in order for your user to be able to close it. And the best way to do that would be to put another command box on your form. And... close window. And what we're wanting to close is a form. Job form one. And we can leave it as prompt to save. If we close this. Now whenever you open up job form, it opens in the center of the screen and you're given the option to close. And you're also given the option to open up a different form. So these are uh, these are some good abilities to uh, help build user functionality into your database. Um, these properties can go a long way, and it can help to. Uh, build controls in your database to keep uh, different things from happening that don't need to happen. Uh, something else that's important is if you wanted to place a text box into your database and link it to some sort of data, which we don't have any data in this particular one, but if we wanted to lock this we could go to all and at the bottom of your all tab under property sheet you should see the option to lock. And if you select yes, then whenever the form is loaded and the box is selected, you'll be able to view whatever information is in the box, but the user will not be able to change it unless the box is unlocked. This keeps any unwanted editing um, that wouldn't be tracked from happening in your database. I uh, hope this was helpful. Please watch our other tutorials.